Hi Aquarius, welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. Aquarius, we're going to see how you have changed. We're gonna see who you were then, who you are now, what lesson you haven't quite fully learned, but what lesson you have fully learned so far in this process called life. I'm gonna use a few different decks. I'm gonna use the um, Tarot of Positive Clarity. I'm going to use the Goddess deck, Goddess Wisdom deck. And to get started, we're going to use the um, Animal Spirit deck. See how you've changed, Aquarius. Aquarius, this is going to be interesting. I literally, like, I pulled out the cards. I looked at the lesson that you had fully learned, and I heard so clearly, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I have walked with sinners. I have cleared my karmic path. <laughs> I don't know. That was interesting. Yeah, it's literally like what's coming in <laughs> with this reading. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. And it is like... So that I'm sitting here and thinking, okay, well, what is that all about? I'm, I'm not Catholic, but I understand the concept of it. Not that I agree with it. I just, it's not really what this reading is about. It's just kind of the concept behind it. It's like asking the universe for forgiveness. But I think, though, the process of asking the universe for forgiveness for you um, is closing off old karmic cycles. Like, that's literally what is sitting on the table. And... Yeah, that's how I'm seeing this. So you close off old karmic cycles. Um, you have, I want to say the universe has forgiven you. Look at this. You have forgiveness and the world. You know, it's funny. The world sat in this. This forgiveness card has been going around a lot lately in this area, that area. Um, you know, actually, what's really interesting, though, now that I think about that, it's kind of coming as something that I watched a couple of days ago. It was about... Uh, a full the full moon that's coming in that's coming in is a full moon in Capricorn. What is that? Now I don't even remember. But there's something significant that happens on July the 18th with Capricorn, and I can't remember what it is. Oh, something to do something to hear about closing off an 18 year lunar cycle. I, I don't know. It's just a vague. It's coming in. I can't. Remember. So it it's something about that, right? And Capricorn being ruled by Saturn. I want to say. Um, sort of like the karmic father, right? Forgive me, father, for I have sinned. That is literally what this is, Aquarius. Mm, that's so fascinating. And like, right, it's closed off. So I'm wondering if there's something like collectively going on with that, you know, because that's kind of coming in. Like, I wish I could remember the details of that video. I was just kind of like casually watching it. Um. Yeah, forgive me, father, for I have sinned. You have been forgiven, my child. But you know what's really interesting is you have fearless and bold in that area. So this is the area that you have fully learned. You have fully learned some sort of karmic cycles. You are closing them off. You when I say forgiven, like right, like that's the whole thing. Like oh, um, God is is all powerful. Is you know like we've always been like taught so incorrectly to fear the power of God. We're really like, we are from God. We are from source. It is nothing to be feared. It is just to be sort of, it's balance. And it maybe the fear is that you can't, you can't negotiate it. You can't create a biased relationship between you and the universe. It has to be equal, right? And that's what, again, like seeing like the scales of justice. And so the forgiven is, well, you did, you do that for yourself. Like you do that somehow in terms of learning a karmic lesson and closing it off. Be fearless and bold. You know how to do that. <laughs> it's showing up here. You know how to be fearless and bold. You know how to be yourself. And that is too. So maybe there's something really quite significant in terms of like even North Node. Because I said that. It has something, something to do with July 18th. 
with a node, I think with the, the moon's lunar nodes. I wish I could remember the video now. Um, mm -hmm. So here's this, I'm gonna be jumping around in different spots in this video because I'm kind of going where it just takes me. Um, this at first, excuse me, your underline, I wasn't sure how to read that. I mean, it's, well, I wasn't sure what is so funny about your past. <laughs> All right, the past humor. Well, it's kind of like I guess when you you close something off. If it's karma, a it's probably not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy for a couple of reasons. You're going to be breaking out of established habits and patterns that um, either you were kind of born into, you created on your own in this lifetime, or these are patterns that have been established in past lifetimes, and you're like here to kind of clarify them, rectify them, create a new path. That's always difficult because any sort of habit, even like a spiritual habit, how you've been spiritually guiding yourself, you're changing that. Um, and it could be changing relationships around you as well. So, you know, this is just like, I'm stepping outside of this groove. I know nobody's gonna like that because everybody follows the groove, but I'm stepping out of the groove. I'm going over to here. Like there's a sense of, right? Like you have to be fearless and bold to do it so i do want to say that your past might be something that you sit back on and you you find humor in it once you've been through it um no i don't know but look at let spirit be your guide is the other underlying i'll go there in a second okay so who you are now this is interesting right and then here's the new beginning bring a gentle touch but it is like bring a gentle touch new beginning new beginnings new beginnings so it's plural so there's a number of different things that will be new beginnings for you um i'm actually seeing these cards in two ways here oh yeah you've paid some sort of karmic debt you have the Ten of Wands and the Devil. And there's that, like, there's the, the Capricorn energy, the Saturn. But it's, I want to say, it's like, it can't touch you. There's two ways that this comes through for me. That As I picked this up, that came in immediately. But there was something else previous um, to me picking this up that came in that I'm going to tell you as well. But this is literally like you're leaving the past behind and it can't touch you. Like, it's not spiritually, it's not energetically, it's not physically possible. And then you walk into, like, ah, it's a very abundant, for one thing, the Empress. It's very, very abundant energy. Now, the other thing, the initial thing that came in with this that I'm going to tell you as well. As you see, the bring a gentle touch. Um, it, it, to me, it's kind of like walking um, gracefully kindly um because this at first felt like somebody that you were leaving behind and that could be possible and this person feels like things have changed so much in your lives that there you are not you are you're on a different path something and i and i it just feels like too like for it to be so significant like right there's this glass um jar over this like you, they can see you but they can't touch you which is odd too right so i kind of feel like because you've walked a path it is almost like you've stepped into a new reality it's a new reality that's where you are right now and like your path your path your paths because you and this person can't cross you know it's not possible but it's something unhealthy and toxic from your past that has been part of whatever this forgive me father for i have sinned <laughs> and i have cleared it up and the universe said yeah you had guess what i can't it's like saturn too like sitting behind the jar i cannot your lesson is learned you may walk forward so i don't know if some of you are even perhaps going through a saturn return or you're leading up to a saturn return because i feel like well, it could be that. It could be that. It could be either. It could be, um, it could be because if you're leading up to a Saturn return, you're preparing, you're doing the work, the signs are showing up for you. The, like, 
what are you going to do? What choices are you going to make here? Because Saturn's sitting at the end of the road, sitting at the end of this road, waiting for you to come forward. And I now I kind of see like Saturn as Anubis, like sitting at the gates to your new destiny. Okay, we're going to weigh your heart. Oh, the scales, we're going to weigh things out. It is, it's like, wow, there's so much symbolism in this reading. It is, it's kind of like, I wonder if there's something in that in Catholicism, like just walking in and kneeling down. And I was, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. But that just seems so easy. I mean, you could do sh you could do shitty things every day to people. As long as you go in there and you tell some guy who's ordained as a priest that he's, oh, it's okay. You know, say 20 Hail Marys and nah. uh, I don't know. There's something, but it's it seems very, the Catholic take on that just seems very um, superficial compared to like the reality and the energy of that experience with the energy of Saturn so now you're walking it so some of you I feel like you are clearly walking your path to your Saturn return if this is resonating for you you have you have yes you have I see that there too and you then wow um so you can confidently say that if you are in the process of releasing certain toxic things from your life things from your past that you know i always say these things they seemed real good when we picked them up and then you pick up more and more of these along the way and then you end up with the ten of wands and you don't you can't do anything because your hands are full you can't see where you're going you've you've um placed burdens on yourself that are holding you back spiritually um ambitiously whatever right so you you are continue to do it you're walking the path you're dropping the things away as you're walking towards the big planet of saturn sitting at the gate waiting for your saturn return if you are having a saturn return i feel like saturn is literally it's it's almost like something comes in whoop, like a force field saturn can't stop you from walking through the gate look at the way it's just like walking forward and i mean walking forward in the best way and it's um like owning the earth it's only but it's owning the earth in a feminine way too right like bring a gentle touch because this is masculine this is masculine energy and saturn is the father and then you'd say like this is mother of the earth and the devil it's almost like the devil energy you could say devil energy utilizes masculine energy in a toxic way to um and some well I want to say it's mirrored back to us we make the choices so maybe it's not i mean we perceive it as toxic but that's our sort of our guidance system to say, okay, this isn't for me. This isn't the path I should be taking. This is how did I get myself into this, right? So yeah, I know I do because the devil, I mean, it, the universe, God, source made everything. So made the devil too. Um, and whether you see the devil is like an actual physical entity or it appears or it is an energy. I feel like it is an energy that moves in and through and out people at different times. It can't touch you. It's, it's Venus. It is Venus and it can't be touched by Saturn. It can't be touched by any karmic energies that are negative that Saturn would use to say, yo, you want something, you got to work for it. If you're going to work for it, there's different ways that you can like, right? The devil will come in and always try to compromise that. It's almost, it's almost like Saturn likes people to stand at the gate with him. Stand at the gate and stay with me here for a while. You can't pass. You didn't pass. Hmm. You passed. You pass. <clears throat> so, who you were then, believe in yourself, flow. When no one else did, you did. And I don't know if you always did, or you just, okay, I'm, I'm kind of hearing two things here. I'm hearing, like, If other people didn't believe in whatever your path was or whatever choices you were making, um, you may not have even, you just, it's almost like you just, you knew you were supposed to do something, but you didn't know why for some of you, right? With flow, like you just, you just go, you just do it. Believe in yourself and flow in your own rhythm. Seven of cups, the star and the three of cups it's beautiful it's like coming out of the fog coming out of confusion there is a sense of turning your back on saturn because you just see it too like this guy is standing literally it's like a bible like um uh 
what do you call that? Like um, uh, like a Bible camp instructor or something like that. I just find that fascinating how I always, like I think of spirituality as a feminine energy, whether you're masculine or feminine, it's a feminine energy. It flows and it flows like, and it is often, like it is for, for most of humanity's existence, it has flowed through like medicine men and women. It has flowed through like paganism. It has flowed through like being incorporated in earth and having that experience where but then I think of religion as so masculine. It's got all this structure. It has all this order, like any religion, like anything. I mean, I I myself, people will probably perceive me to be like very like witchy or, but I don't follow any. I don't, I get very uncomfortable with any type of religion. I don't, <laughs> it's just like, because we are meant to be naturally flowing through spirit and soul with all of the other spirits and souls that are here on earth, even those are plants or animals. But right, so it's just coming off to me like, so that's, I want to kind of, I guess, explain to you how I'm seeing that because maybe not everyone understands uh, my take on that, but that's kind of how I feel in that, that religion is the masculine and it is the contained um, structure for spiritualism. But it's meant to flow, right? Well, see, again, flow. So maybe even, maybe some of you have pulled away from a religion. Maybe some of you have pulled away from a more religious structure in your life as well, or some sort of like structures. Because it's just looking to me like, um, yeah. I have, I have all the knowledge in the book. I got it from over there. <laughs> I got it from up there. I got it there. But we all have it within us, right? And it could be like things that have confused you in the past but you see there's an initial turning away he's turning away but the book in front of him happens to be blank it's like almost like when you realize so there's a sense of the in-between too like taking place in who you were then like walking away from your past but not right not really quite walking oh walking into you but like there you are aquarius but to me this is also like blessings from heaven like this is blessings from heaven this is healed this is beautiful, beautiful energy. I want to say, too, it could even be like with this Three of Cups, if you're closing off karma, it could have even been like some sort of choices or a path that you um, you made, uh, karmic energy that you created with um, different soul tribes, soul families in different lifetimes and closing it off. It's almost like reuniting with your true soul family here in the past i love it it's like thumbs up right good for you <laughs> yeah good for you okay now the lesson that you haven't fully learned so this is interesting lay a solid foundation co-creation like right let spirit let spirit be your guide spirit wants to guide you here to lay a solid foundation into this new path that you've decided to take for yourself you haven't really carved out any um, karmic energy yet. Karma to me just being all energies that flows in and out. I'm not really a big fan of Dharma because I don't think that we have the conscious ability to choose what is right or wrong or what. Like again, like even just as I explained the devil, we say, oh, it's bad. It's we're, ta we're taking that on from a limited human mind set to say that. Whereas I feel like, again, it's almost, it is like the Saturn energy that, oh, it's nice for you to hang out at the gate with me. So I'm going to give you some options here. You're going to get some options along the way. My buddy Jupiter is going to come in and give you some some ideas about shortcuts that you can take. Uh, but they're actually not really on your path. And they have nothing to do with the lessons that you're supposed to be learning. So you know what I mean? Like you can look at that and you can say, yeah, that was But this is looking back at your past with humor. Again, right? So it, karma to me is all energy. It is like paving it it is rectifying it it is balancing it it is taking a breath every day which is um utilizing something that earth has created and you you are taking that in you know like everything that you do is so you it's right the book the blank book in front of you what are you going to pay forward the three of wands now this is interesting this is the universe wants to co-create with you but it wants to do it in a way where it is delivering so you are receiving in receptive energy 
So your, your now is receptive. It is feminine energy. And the universe wants to co-create with you. It's so itchy. A bug bit me. I think a bug bit me. I'm sorry. Probably think I have fleas or something. I'm sitting and scratching. <laughs> in the winter because my skin gets a little dry. And then in the summer because the bugs bite me. So. Um, this underlying. Mm, I'm not sure. The chariot, the nine of swords, and the seven of swords. What is this about? That is odd. It doesn't come in. Maybe this is part of the sin. <laughs> no. Moving. I mean, it's underlined. So it's like things that could be past. Things of the past. I don't know. Maybe you did something. Maybe you stole something. Maybe you stole something from yourself. Maybe you realized that. I don't know. I'm actually going to clarify that right now because it's it's a funny it's a funny little part of this reading. Everything else is so clear. Yeah, really clear. I'm going to work backwards in it. What is the Seven of Swords? It's funny. Two cards landed on the Chariot and one landed on the Nine of Swords. It is the Death card, the King of Cups, and the Four of Pentacles. Whoa, there's some emotions here that you have, um, you've held back on. I don't know, I'm going to say in the past. Well, now you're laughing. Right, now you're laughing at the past. <laughs> no, that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's the best. What, what is humor? Jerry Seinfeld defined it in the best way. I believe it was him that defined humor is tragedy plus time, right? That's how we look at it. That's how it is. Whatever that time space needs to be, the bigger the tragedy, usually the longer the time space until, right, you can start making jokes about it. But that's what it is. And it is trying to, because that... Uh, you know, people say, oh, people get so upset about, you know, having humor about things. But if you don't, you're not going to raise your frequency. You're not going to raise your vibration when we talk about that. Like at this negative energy, it is like, it's just something really interesting here about looking back at your past and laughing at it. Not correct, but always laugh at ourselves, right? Always laugh at ourselves. Um... And I feel like that's what this is possibly. It could be a shared joke between you and someone else. Mm. Okay, the nine of swords. And I think that's what comedians do. They try to get us to laugh at ourselves, where most people think that they're making fun of us. They're not. They're trying to get us to laugh at ourselves. They're trying to raise our frequency. The nine of swords. The queen of wands. And the chariot. The six of cups and the chariot. Okay, so now I'm going to look at this, the chariot. This is, oh, two. This is a path. This is a path. You might even be, some of you, a path unrecognized. And now you're recognizing it. Because as I say that there's, Someone from your past who, <laughs> it's like your paths cannot cross anymore. Now I'm looking at this underline. I'm seeing like almost until you become connected with your emotions. Then you start actually lining up to other paths that you're supposed to connect with people on. Could be something very unique about either people you're meant to meet along the way or people or how you inspire other people. But there's definitely something here about being really anxious about something. Maybe even feeling like, I don't know, the Queen of Wands is the most attractive in the deck. So it could be like this this future, this possibility, this person, it's way too, way too attractive for me. I don't know. 
but hiding your feelings and your emotions. But that's the past. That's the past. Let's laugh at that, shall we? Actually, I'm not even going to clarify anything that came out as a reading. It's so, it's so clear. But okay, the past. Let's see what this past was, and then we'll see how you develop humor around it. The Knight of Cups and the Queen of Swords. The past. Oh, that's funny. It's no, that's interesting, right? It's like trying to, trying to offer love to a brainiac. <laughs> like trying to, in the past, trying to offer love clearly. Okay, so what's so funny now? <laughs> Being blocked in love? Oh, it's something, oh my God. Oh, this is just a second. Okay, these three came out first. The Five of Swords, the Nine of Swords, and the Two of Pentacles. I want to, okay, the one other thing I want to say too is you could have in the past, like you may have made offers to people from your heart, love offers even, and they may have been cut out. They may have been cut out. But I want to say here, now what's so funny is the first part of the story, because there's more cards, there's quite a few sitting on the table and they're all face down, so I can't see them. So they're not going to influence what I'm about to say. But this is like um, cutting things out. Oh, cutting things out. Only to realize it's an option. Well, that's funny. Right? Because it's something like this Knight of Cups. I mean, to hit the Queen of Swords, it's gonna get, he's going to get cut. He's going to get hurt. And it's, but then you cut something out and the anxiety of that's a choice, that's an option, or trying to balance this. What is this that has come out? This is the judgment, the moon, the two of wands, the four of cups, and the six of pentacles. It's almost like trying to find balance here. I do feel like there's some sort of connection in this, like laughing at your past, Maybe not even recognizing your future when you were in your past. Because you were in your past. <laughs> right? Like you've, you've corrected something. Hmm, interesting. So funny. Isn't that funny? So Spirit's going to be your guide here. How is Spirit going to help you? Spirit, let Spirit be your guide. <clears throat> The King of Swords, oh, and the High Priestess. Wow, you're going to see shit. You're going to understand, like, sort of, boy, I would even say for some of you, this could be very, um, different levels this could come in. Like, this could be, like, really deep hidden secrets of the universe. That This could also be, like, deep hidden secrets about your own path, your own destiny. Shit. You know what I love, too? Like, combining these two, these are, like, the rules. I want to say the rules of of divine the rules of god like the truth as opposed to just some guy who's going to put on a rope and say this is my interpretation of what was written three thousand years ago and, I know. and you should live your life according to that okay <laughs> anyways that's my sass you don't have to agree with it but it's what i believe all right so the ace of cups you have the page of swords the ace of cups the eight of wands and the ten of cups I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say, never take advice. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Never take advice who lives in a tiny little country full of gold and shit. <laughs> full of gold. <clears throat> there's there's more than enough reason why you shouldn't take advice from them. But anyway, so you're underlying and telling the poor that they need to be they need to come to you to ask for forgiveness. So, to get the page of swords, the ace of cups, the eight of wands and the 10 of cups. Boy, you're going to see, you're going to see like happiness. You're going to see the road and the path to happiness. You're going to <laughs> it Sounds weird. I know it sounds, but I'm saying like I think because this energy, it's kind of giving me a perspective now on poor Capricorn. Maybe there's something cuz Ah, that was a hard reading I did for Capricorn. And I was like, you know, it's going to get good. But it seems hard to believe. It's going to get good. I think there could be something significant there in terms of the, the full moon and Capricorn with whatever, you know, that is. But yeah, you're going to see the path to happiness. 
love, joy, fulfillment. Yo, I'm going to go do the extended. In the extended, I'm going to see you in transformation. Almost feels to me like, um, I would describe it maybe even a bit like, uh, it's been coming up a lot. It's like the empty sponge. You know, you've been wringing out the past and now it is like very, but also like um, a piece of like raw clay ready to be molded into whatever this new, you know, destined path you're about to take. So we're going to look at you in transformation and then you in the future. Thank you so much, Aquarius. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.